I'm Luke Story. For the past 22 years, I've been relentlessly committed to my deepest passion, designing the ultimate lifestyle based on the most powerful principles of spirituality, health, psychology, and personal development. The Lifestylist Podcast is a show dedicated to sharing my discoveries and the experts behind them with you. I'm going to admit something here, okay? I suck at cooking. Uh, I suck at making uh, smoothies, (laughs) elixirs. (laughs) Now, that doesn't mean I can't make something that's good for you. And I can make a bomb-ass smoothie elixir that is incredibly fortifying and nutritious. However, making one that tastes good to a normal person is very challenging for me. So I'm, I'm kind of joking. I mean, I'm okay at it, but... Uh, One way I've managed to hack the system of creating amazing tasting smoothies and hot elixirs, both, that are not only delicious, but also highly nutritious is by using this product called Organifi Gold. It's kind of my secret weapon. I've had so many people over the years come to my house and I offer them, you know, an herbal drink of sorts to help them feel awesome. And, uh, you know, in most cases they say yes. And I come out with just about any drink I make, honestly, that has Organifi Gold in it is going to get a positive response. And then, of course, I just take the credit and say that I made it up. But what makes Organifi Gold awesome is not only that it tastes delicious, almost like a dessert or a golden latte, if you've had one of those, but the fact that it has nine superfoods formulated for rest and relaxation. It's, of course, 100% certified organic, tastes delicious in warm or cold drinks. It's also very low in sugar. And even though this is a very calming drink and one that's great at night to support with relaxation and sleep, you're going to wake up feeling refreshed without drowsiness, which is really important. Sometimes I'll take a sleep blend and it just knocks me out so much that the next morning I feel drowsy. So get your hands on some Organifi Gold. It's got turmeric, reishi mushroom, ginger, all of these incredible adaptogenic herbs and mushrooms. And that's something that I'm just a huge fan of. So if you want to get your grubby little paws on some, here's what you do. Go to Organifi.com slash Lifestylist. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I, Organifi with an I. Organifi.com slash Lifestylist. If you want to be smart, use the code Lifestylist there to save yourself 20% off. That's Organifi.com slash Lifestylist. I've been into making superfood and super herb smoothies and elixirs for many, many years. And one thing that's always been a bit problematic about it was sourcing the individual ingredients and making sure that they're of the highest quality and then putting them together in one drink that doesn't taste disgusting. It's been a lot of years that I've been working on this and I don't think I've perfected it. So I was extremely ecstatic And I connected with this brand called Earth Echo Foods and a product they make called Cacao Bliss. Because what they've done is taken some of my favorite superfoods and put it in a pre-made powder that I can simply mix or add into any other drink. So in this powder, we of course have raw cacao that supports your body's natural ability to regulate blood sugar, also keeps you satiated and reduces the number of carbohydrates you absorb, turmeric, which we know fights inflammation related to physical exercise, improves digestion, provides pain relief, dissolves stubborn fat, and even soothes anxiety and stress. Then black pepper to maximize your results by increasing the bioavailability of the turmeric by up to 2,000%. We've got MCT powder to help you feel satiated longer with those healthy fats making it easier for your body to release stubborn fat deposits, cinnamon to further improve your body's ability to digest glucose and reduce your desire for sugary sweets, which I have a lot of. And we've got monk fruit, which satisfies your sweet tooth as well as sugar with zero calories and no ill effect on your blood sugar. Coconut nectar that acts as a prebiotic and feeds the healthy gut bacteria in your lower intestine. Then we've got lacuma, which adds a delicious caramel-like flavor and also adds a wound healing property to the drink. Then they've included some mesquite, a sweet and nutty superfood that doesn't cause blood sugar spikes and helps to boost your immune system. And finally, last but not least, some Himalayan salt, which adds to the flavor profile and also contains over 84 minerals and trace elements while helping to balance your pH levels. So this drink is incredible. It's really good for you. It tastes delicious. It's like candy without the candy. If you're ready to check it out, which I hope you are, here's what you do. Go to earthechofoods.com slash Luke Story. 
That's E-A-R-T-H-E-C-H-O-F-O-O-D-S. EarthEchoFoods.com slash Luke Story. The code there for your Cacao Bliss is Luke15, and that saves you 15% off. So you're looking for Cacao Bliss at EarthEchoFoods.com slash Luke Story. This is episode 344 of the Lifestylist podcast. It's a solo show wherein I answer questions taken from the Lifestylist podcast Facebook group. Make sure to join us there where you can ask and answer questions along with 6,000 other Lifestylist podcast listeners. Before we get started, here's a little disclaimer for you. You know how that goes, legal liability and all. And uh, also just to be in integrity, quite frankly, I want you to know that I am not a doctor or a healthcare professional. I am simply sharing my two decades of experience in self-healing. So if you've got something going on that's serious, uh, please consult your doctor and, of course, inner guidance before undergoing any medical treatment or wacky-ass biohacks. Before we get started, I'd like to invite you to tune in to our regularly programmed show next Tuesday featuring Dr. Dean Howell. It's called It's All in Your Head, Neurocranial Restructuring for Pain, Migraines, and True Alignment. It's an incredible conversation and one that you don't want to miss. It's also worth noting that whenever possible, me and the team have included clickable notes to everything mentioned here in the show, which you can find on some podcast player apps, but you can always find them by getting on my newsletter. To do so, go to lukestory.com slash newsletter and sign up. Now, we also do complete written transcripts of every single episode, which are also linked in the show notes. So again, get on the newsletter. It's a good newsletter. It's infrequent. You can unsubscribe if you don't like it. Uh, but you probably will. So again, go to lukestory.com slash newsletter. Now, for most of the products that I use personally uh, that are mentioned during these solo shows, just know that you can find most of them at lukestory.com slash store. And make sure to give the store a visit if you feel like going on a shopping spree. However, that said, remember that you are your own medicine and the best biohacks are free. I always like to remind the audience of that. You know, a lot of us, including myself over the years, God knows how much money I've spent on supplements and technologies and devices, etc. But truly, and I'm not being cute here just to save you money, the best biohacks are free. Starts with human love, self-love, human touch and connection, prayer and meditation, breath work, cold exposure, sun gazing, exercise, and of course, avoiding EMF whenever feasible. All right, here goes. Enjoy the show. First question comes from Bobby Joe, and she asks, which supplement or modality is best for removing heavy metals and toxins? Now, first off, I'd like to say that I think it's a great idea to get uh, some lab tests done by a company called Quicksilver Scientific or a functional medicine doctor to determine which specific metals or toxins are in your body before you start creating a plan to get them out. You also want to make sure your bowel is super clean and working properly before you start detoxing metals from your organs. Gravity-fed colonics and or oxy powder is a great way to do that. Now, when it comes to detoxing, and I've done a lot of heavy metal detoxing over the years, uh, the idea is to have something that is going to flush those metals out of your organs and then something to catch them. Now, Quicksilver Scientific has an amazing detox product. It comes in a box. It's called the Black Box 2. I've used a couple of them over the years. And it is a true push-catch system wherein the process that I just described is done masterfully. I also did something a number of years ago uh, known as the L. Ron Hubbard Niacin Detox. They actually have a Facebook group. You can go over there and learn that and join that group as well. And that does not mean that I'm a Scientologist. Uh, (laughs) Far from it, I think. But uh, the detox program got its name because L. Ron Hubbard made it popular detoxing drug addicts in the 70s as part of the Scientology protocol. Pretty interesting stuff. The basic idea there is you're increasing your niacin dosage and flushing toxins from your fat cells where toxins are typically stored, at least the really hard ones to get to. Uh, including the fat in your brain, I would assume. And so you're using the niacin uh, and increasing the dosage day by day over the course of anywhere from 20 to 30 days and then using a number of supplements to then flush those toxins out, binders, activated charcoal, things like that. And uh, spending a lot of time in the sauna. Now, L. Ron Hubbard's folks used to be in the sauna, I think like four to six hours a day while they were doing this detox. And by the way, he did get a lot of drug addicts clean. Uh, by doing this because it's such an effective way to get toxins out of the body. Thankfully, uh, we have 
infrared saunas now. And so when I did this one, I think I did 30 days and I followed the directions of a guy named Brett in the uh, Niacin Detox. I think it's called the Niacin Sauna Detox Facebook group. And I paid a few bucks, maybe 300 bucks for a number of supplements and some coaching from one of his coaches and uh, did it in my infrared sauna. And that single-handedly got my lead levels down um, uh, very impressively. I also had some mercury and things like that going on. However, just know that is a really hardcore cleanse. I mean, it takes a lot of dedication. Aside from putting things into your body that flush toxins out and then catch them and get them out of your body, uh, lots of saunas in general, infrared saunas, just sweating is a great way to get toxins out of your body. Another thing I would recommend is EMF proofing your bedroom so that your body can go into a parasympathetic rest state at night while you're sleeping. Your body has a very difficult time detoxing on its own if you are agitated by the AC current coming off your walls by RF, uh, radio frequencies rather, coming in uh, from devices inside your house or cell towers and smart meters outside of your house. And um, another tip that Brian Hoyer, my EMF go-to guy, shared with me a couple days ago as we were doing the EMF shielding on my new house in Austin is that you don't want to have the head of your bed facing north because why is it north? It's magnetic north, right? When you get a compass, the way it works is... uh, using the magnetism of the planet to figure out which way north is. And it turns out minerals and metals love to head north. Now, I don't know that that's true, but I think there is a bit of research behind that. Uh, I'm debating that one myself because really just in terms of the layout of my new bedroom, uh, (laughs) where I'm really excited to install my Samina bed that I've been wanting for six years or so, um, it's not going to look that great to have the bed facing, uh, the other choice would be East, but, uh, I'm going to do a bit more research on that, but it's definitely something to consider. But I think when you're talking about detoxing anything, again, it's a good idea to get some testing done to figure out really what's going on because a detox protocol is going to be different based on what toxins are in your body. And those are a few of the tips based on things that I've tried that have been effective. Okay, next question is from Julia. Julia says, talk water to me. I think that's kind of like talk dirty to me. She says, what do you drink? I have a Berkey, but think I need to do STH to it. Now, I did a web search on STH thinking perhaps I'm just too old to understand what that acronym means. And uh, there were various meanings that I found and uh, none of them made sense pertinent to her question. So that's what it says. So I'm I'm reading these questions verbatim. Uh, Authenticity is a a value here at the Lifestylist Podcast, and that's the deal. So I think maybe she means I've got to make room to do it. I'm not sure. At any rate, here's the deal. I know a lot of people love the Berkeys. They look kind of cool. They're stainless steel. They are supposedly a reverse osmosis system. However, the Berkey filters were debunked bigly by our recent water expert guest, Robert Slovak, in episode 313 for their propensity to make sneaky false claims on their website. And if you're going to listen to anyone about water filtration, uh, I think Robert Slovak would be the guy. He was one of the pioneers that brought the uh, process of reverse osmosis to the market way back in the day. He is a true pioneer when it comes to water filtration. Fun fact here that uh, we learned in that episode, for those of you that haven't heard it or are not going to go back and listen to it, The reverse osmosis process uh, wherein water is purified was originally used for car washes. You know, those spots you get on your car after you go to the car wash, if it's not wiped down well enough? Well, it turns out those are minerals. That's hard water. So they needed to create something that would take the minerals out of the water, hence reverse osmosis. And Berkey claims to be able to do that. But according to Robert, uh, doing some research on their website and some of the studies that they cite, uh, he determined that that was indeed fake news and I would have to side with him on that one. Now, I did spring water for, oh man, I want to say 15, maybe 20 years. I was going to get spring water from the mountains in California. And actually, I, I collect spring water wherever I go. If possible, I go to a site called findaspring.com. And uh, I found a couple springs, uh, about 8,000 feet up. One of them was by Big Bear, another one by um, an Angeles forest near a town called Wrightwood. Don't ask me how to find them. They were really difficult to find and even more difficult to explain to someone because they're not like a spring that people typically go to. However, that, uh, that became kind of laborious and time consuming. So I switched to Alive Spring Water, my friend Chris's company, and they would bring chilled, pristine, clean, untouched, 
unfiltered, uh, no hands on it water from Oregon. And they would keep it chilled all the way from Oregon to a warehouse in LA and keep it chilled there, put it back on the chilled truck and deliver it to my house. And if you live in California, it's likely they can do that for you. So clean, pristine, lab tested spring water to me is the ultimate, especially if it's very low in inorganic minerals, meaning as a low TDS or total dissolved solids, which a great water like a live spring water is. Uh, and also keep in mind that water from high altitudes tends to be much lower in deuterium, something we're going to talk about later in this episode. So having said all that, filtered water is better than just regular municipal tap water. Not all spring waters are created e- equal, but when it comes to filtration, uh, I definitely do not recommend the Berkey. I am now drinking Mountain Valley spring water in glass now that I've arrived in Texas because there are no Rocky Mountains here from which to get low mineral, low deuterium spring water. So I'm doing the best I can. It's not ideal. Mountain Valley uh, is okay, but it's really well water, not spring water. It comes from an aquifer in Arkansas and um, it's pretty high in minerals. Um, Now that said, okay, quality problem here, first world problem alert. I realize that I'm a water snob and, uh, you know, hey, I can't help it that I was born that way. But uh, for now, I'm drinking the Mountain Valley water. I add the Quinton minerals to the water, which I think I'll talk about in a few. And I also got an incredible AquaTrue system for my future home from Water and Wellness. You can find that there. Of course, again, that's linked in the show notes. Pristine Hydro also makes an incredible portable countertop reverse osmosis system. Now, there are many companies out there that do RO or reverse osmosis systems. However, they have holding tanks under the sink. And I'm not a fan of that just due to the fact that it's very likely that harmful bacteria is going to build up in said holding tank. And that's something that I also learned from Robert Slovak and has been Uh, validated by many water experts. Uh, If you put water in a container and you never flush it out, guess what happens? Stuff grows in it. So not a fan of that system. And again, first choice would be spring water. But if if you're unable to get that, then filtered water uh, would be a good option. And the AquaTrue system is an RO system, but it doesn't have a holding tank. It's a countertop system. Very incredible technology. I think it's the best one that I've seen for that price point. I think they're around three to four hundred dollars. Definitely worth checking that out. Okay, now for the next question, I didn't catch a name on this one, and then I went back in the group (laughs) to try to scroll through the activity in there, and I couldn't find it. I was like, "What? This post was so long." And I really loved this question and I love the dedication that this person had. So if you're that dude from the group, uh, forgive me for not giving you a shout out. I mean, you know, a first name anonymous shout out, of course. But uh, he said something to the effect of this. He's having a terrible time sleeping. He had just gone through a breakup and then said, here's what I'm doing to improve my sleep. And I'm going to read you a litany of really great sleep practices. I mean, this guy's my hero. I do all of this stuff on a good day, barely. He says, but no matter what he tries, it's not working. So here's what he's doing that is, you know, I think the absolute sleep hygiene um, list, really. I could I could make an online course just out of what this guy is doing. It's incredible. Dealing with his emotions and getting lots of support right now, hence the breakup. I know when there have been times of emotional turmoil in my life, uh, when I'm incredibly triggered because something in my current life reminds my brain of something painful or dangerous in prior life, uh, the brain thinks it's happening again. And next thing you know, you're full of adrenaline and cortisol and having a really rough time. So I'm glad to hear that he's dealing with the emotional aspect. Also stop drinking all caffeine, period. Wow, now that is a tall order, my friend. He's doing blue blockers at sundown. So he's uh, you know protecting his melatonin and his eyes and everything like that by not exposing himself to junk non-native blue light at night, huge for sleep. He does a sauna and meditation an hour before bed. You know, that's something right there that just caught my eye. The sauna, great idea because it's a hermetic stress and stress. And if it's an infrared sauna, it's going to put you into a parasympathetic nervous system state, which is of course a great way to prepare your body for sleep. But I know from personal experience, if I meditate too late in the day, especially an hour before bed, dog, I ain't sleeping. Like that is not happening. I will be up full of energy all night. In fact, when I do like a Joe Dispenza meditation, um, Vedic meditation, if I use the New Calm app, 
and I do it after six, I'm almost guaranteed to be tossing and turning all night. I really prefer to do my meditation early in the morning and then really no later than uh, four, even 5 p.m. is pushing it because it's so energizing. He also says he's keto at breakfast and lunch. So it sounds like he's doing some cyclical ketosis there, which is always a good thing. He also says he's eating at least three hours before bed and getting some carbs in. Now, anyone that's tried to go keto knows that it can be very hard on your sleep, especially if you're not eating any carbs at night, like full ketosis. I don't know how people do it. It takes quite a while to adjust. Now you've got your Paul Saladino and even my brother, Andy Story, uh, Michaela Peterson, Jordan Peterson, a lot of the proponents of the carnivore diet. I mean, I'm assuming they're in like full on ketosis and they seem to be sleeping. But for me, I've always found it difficult. So even when I do ketosis during the day, I'm going to crush a few carbs at night. Plus I just get cravings for carbs at night, unless I use my element electrolytes to curb them. I'll talk more about that at the end of the show. He also turns off his Wi-Fi at night. Super smart. He uses the earth pulse PEMF under his bed. Now I used to use that device and I'm not going to shit on them because I'm sure that it has some benefits. It's sort of like an amp coil junior. It creates, it's got a little motherboard, right? Uh, it's a digital little transmitter that has a number of frequencies, the Schumann resonance, et cetera. And then it transmits those frequencies into these two tiny magnets that would fit in the palm of your hand. And the idea there is that you put those, those under your mattress and, um, and you sleep with this magnetic field. Now I stopped using mine personally because I didn't want electric wires under my mattress. So that would be a potential red flag. It's one of those things, unless they've learned, you know, they might have, this is years ago when I used mine, but if they've learned that fact over at Earth Pulse and have shielded the AC current on the electric wiring going to the unit and any EMF coming off of the wires going to the magnets, then I think that magnetic field could be beneficial. However, when it comes to magnetism, I personally would use the Magnetico uh, sleep pads. They're actually, I think they're called the Magnetico, yeah, Magnetico sleep pads. And those do not plug in. They create a magnetic field that mimics the magnetic field that was once present on the surface of the earth and has diminished due to solar flares and the polar shift and probably widespread um, wireless communications in the atmosphere. So the earth pulse to me is a, eh, I'm not sure that's such a great idea. And uh, I'm just going to add this magnetico to my notes here so that I can make sure to put it in the show notes. He's also got a blue shield device in his room, not to be confused with blue shield, the insurance company. He's talking about a scalar wave generator that helps mitigate the effects of EMF. I can verify that is in fact the case. I love the blue shield technology. Uh, I've got them in everywhere that I am, in my car, when I travel, when I drive around, in my pocket. Uh, scalar is a real thing. And uh, a lot of skeptics that think that scalar and quantum energy is woo-woo, uh, I'm, I'm just going to say are sorely mistaken. Uh, these are absolutely scientifically validated. Now, that said, they do not block EMF. And I think that that's the thing that really triggers people, thinking that there's an untrue claim being made by these devices that... Uh, harmonize your environment, or just in Blue Shield's case, uh, rendering your body and your biology less susceptible to the negative impact of EMF. So when we talk about things like the Soma Vedic, the Blue Shield, um, the FLFE service, Focus Life Force Energy, which is probably my top EMF hack in the world and just top mood and happiness hack. It's a service you can get on your house. I've done a show on it. There'll be another one coming up soon. Um, and then another company called Leela Quantum Tech. I just did a show with um, their CEO named Philip recently. So some of these devices are great to have around. So I'm glad that he's uh, doing something here for the EMF, but we're going to get more on that in a moment. But Blue Shield to me worked great when I was living next to two cell towers. Unknowingly, it really helped me uh, you know, recover from the damage that was done. He's also doing magnesium and something called Nervine herbs before bed. Maybe he means like nervous system herbs or something. Uh, he's got a chili pad set to 68. That's a win. He's got organic bedding. Uh, he's doing everything right. The only thing he didn't list, which I can only assume he's doing because he's so committed and on point with all these other things, is the uh, room blackout. Zero light in the room. Now, if you've got devices in the room, maybe there's a TV, alarm clock, something like that, that is emitting even a tiny amount of blue light, 
chances are that blue light's an LED, which means that light is flickering in an unperceivable to your eye manner. And that can be very agitating. So you want zero, zero light. I mean, I'm talking, you can't see your hand in front of your face, darkness in your room if you really want to get good sleep. But I'm sure he's doing something to that effect. So here's a couple guesses and recommendations that I might have for him. And it's funny that this question should be posed. And it's one of the reasons I wanted to go ahead and include it in the solo show is because normally I sleep pretty well. I mean, I do all of this stuff and more. Uh, I think one thing he doesn't have in here, by the way, would be, you know, things like CBD and valerian and other knock you on your ass kind of herbs and supplements and stuff. But uh, I've been experiencing this too. And it's crazy because I think, man, I normally sleep so well, what's up? But what's up is I'm in an apartment building and it's been quite a while since I've lived in an apartment. And I'm kind of in the suburbs of Austin, Texas. It's not a hugely populated area. It's not, it's not that dense, but uh, there's definitely a lot more EMF around here than I'm used to. And even though I have the Soma Vedic and the FLFE and Lila Tech and all of this stuff, uh, one thing that I just realized was that these technologies don't really do much for the AC current, the electric fields in your house. So I thought I'm fine with the RF. I mean, I'm doing pretty, pretty good with every intervention that I have installed in this apartment. But last night I did something different and I went to the breaker box because I noticed that it happened to be in the main bedroom where Alice and I sleep. And I turned off the breaker that killed all the power in the room. And my sleep was, I don't want to exaggerate, but I want to say 20 to 30% better in one night. Some of that might be placebo because of course I consciously knew that I was turning off the electricity in the room. But something I just learned yesterday with Brian Hoyer when we were going over the EMF shielding that he had done at our new house that I didn't know that was both terrifying and enlightening was that when you have an AC current that's in the United States, 60 hertz going through the wiring in your walls, uh, typically when people build buildings, they don't shield that wiring. And so what happens is the electric field latches on, for lack of a better term, to the minerals in drywall and sheetrock and actually creates an electric field on the whole wall that will travel into the center of the room from three to six feet. And we walked around my house with these meters and we tested walls that he had shielded for the electric field and walls that were not shielded. And it was incredible. I think we have no idea the electric fields that we're sleeping near. I mean, I always try to keep, you know, if there's a cell phone charging or lamps or any kind of devices, I'll push them sort of to the edge of the nightstands and, you know, unplug as many things as I can. But man, when I saw that over at my house, I was shitting bricks. And so that was um, part of the impetus last night to get up and turn the breaker off and call it psychosomatic or not. But I swear to God, man, when you turn the power off in your bedroom, the energy gets so still and quiet. It's incredible. And it's not even witchcraft. I mean, really, there are, I don't know how many tens of thousands of studies that prove unequivocally that being exposed to 60 hertz at any time, especially when you're sleeping, uh, causes an agitation to your nervous system. It keeps you in a sympathetic nervous system response. And when you're sleeping, you want to be parasympathetic. You want your body to be as relaxed as humanly possible so that it can do all of the recovering and restoration from all the damage and oxidative stress that you cause from going out and living your best life the day before. So I'm going to recommend that here. Uh, and even better than that, you know, if you can hit a breaker and turn your power off, but man, if you can get your bedroom tested for EMF, determine you might have also bad wiring in your house and there could be magnetic fields coming out three to six feet or even under your entire bed. Uh, you might be sleeping on a geopathic stress zone where the ley lines on the surface of the earth underneath your building just happen to cross right under your bed. I mean, this has been proven to cause cancer and cause uh, giant trees to die over time and plants won't grow there and businesses fail when they put them on top of these ley lines. Uh, what happens when there's a crack in the surface of the earth like that, and they're everywhere, they're, there's really like an invisible grid on the face of the planet that you can uh, find using dowsing rods. And what happens is uh, radiation, actually a magnetic radiation, a magnetic field travels up 
uh, from the surface of the earth on these ley lines. And you might have your bed on one of those, like I used to in Los Angeles until I tested it and found that out. Uh, And that could be really harming your sleep patterns. So that's something to look at too. And then if you get someone to come out and test like a Brian Hoyer or a building biologist, they'll be able to determine exactly what the EMF levels are in your room, um, what's producing them, and then the best strategy for shielding them. So I'm going to tell our anonymous friend here, man, it it gets expensive. I'm not going to lie. But like when it comes to sleep, to me, I'm willing, I'll buy a cheaper car. You know what I mean? I'll sell the TV, like cancel a couple memberships, get rid of Netflix, like anything I could do, uh, cook my own food, eat out less, like anything I could do, honestly, to get my bedroom tested and shielded, I I would do it. Uh, So that would be my advice there. And then the next one would be to get your neurotransmitters tested. You want to test, you know, your cortisol, your melatonin, any testing you can get done to see if there's actually something going on on a biochemical level that's uh, ruining your sleep. Another one back on the breakup would be to really go whole hog on the spiritual emotional healing. And that could include any type of therapy, um, you know, energy healing modalities, EMDR, hypnosis, and maybe, and I'm saying this is a hard and maybe with an asterisk here, uh, plant medicines or therapist assisted psychedelic treatments with things like psilocybin, ketamine. Um, These are now becoming widely known even in mainstream medicine to be extremely effective for healing recent and even very distant emotional trauma. And again, maybe. I don't think this would be appropriate for everyone. It really depends on what you have going on in your life and of course set and setting intention and someone who can really hold space and be a great guide for that type of experience. However, I would be be being actually quite dishonest to not mention that as for me personally, after a lot of years of doing work without the assistance of those type of experience uh, has been the biggest needle mover in my entire life. So that's something to consider if you find yourself stuck on some emotional pain, trauma, et cetera, and you're super triggered and it's keeping you up all night. I'm not saying go off and eat a bunch of mushrooms so you can sleep. I'm saying start to do some deep inner work and really heal And um, you're very likely to stop repeating some of those patterns that get you into these painful relationships and jobs and making the kind of choices that we make to get ourselves into this predicament in the first place. So I would add that. And then uh, there's another one here. And this is, this is, we're going to go fringe a little bit as if psychedelic therapy isn't fringe, hopefully not for long. Uh, That would be high-dose melatonin suppositories from a guy I recently discovered named Dr. John Lawrence in Florida. And I don't have his site in front of me, but we will put in the show notes, Dr. John Lawrence. And this guy formulates some incredibly interesting supplements, many of them, unfortunately or fortunately because of their efficacy, being suppositories. And that means um, little (laughs) torpedoes of uh, nutrients that you put up the old... (laughs) Um, so I would definitely check that out. In fact, I was thinking of doing that myself when I realized I was having some sleep disturbances here because man, when I don't sleep, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm no spring chicken. And, uh, honestly, even all the biohacking and all of the things that I do to take care of myself emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically, if I don't get good, solid sleep, uh, I am not a happy camper and I just do not function at an optimal level. So those would be my sleep recommendations, my friend. We'll be right back at you after this brief but important announcement. In today's world, one thing has become abundantly clear, and that is as a collective and as individuals, we could really be well served by learning how to manage our stress. In fact, according to the American Psychological Association, chronic stress is linked to the six leading causes of death. That's how serious it is. So as we see the world changing around us, it's more important than ever, in my opinion, that we learn how to adapt to stress. And one of the most important molecules in the world to help the body and mind alleviate and deal with stress is magnesium. Now, most people think stress is caused by things like work, traffic, tense relationships, politics, and all that stuff. So they focus on solutions like meditation, going to the spa, going to the gym, trying to chill out. I'm a fan of most of those things. But what if the root cause of much of the stress we experience has to do with the deficiency in magnesium? Magnesium is the body's master mineral. 
It's so powerful that it helps to regulate over 300 critical reactions in the body, including detoxification, fat metabolism, energy, stress, and even digestion is influenced by the presence of magnesium. So if there's one mineral you should make sure to include in your diet, it's magnesium. And it's very difficult to get an adequate level of magnesium in your diet due to the depletion of this mineral in our soils, etc. So that's why I'm really excited to tell you about a new magnesium product called Magnesium Breakthrough. It's the ultimate magnesium supplement. Easily the best I've ever seen or experienced in all my years of geeking out on this stuff. It's got seven forms of magnesium, which is unheard of. So if you're ready to check it out, here's what you do. Go to buyoptimizers.com slash Luke. And once you get there, the product you're looking for is Magnesium Breakthrough. If you use the code LUKE10, you'll save 10%, but you can also save up to 40% off select packages of Magnesium Breakthrough. So again, go to buyoptimizers.com slash Luke. That's B-I-O-P-T-I-M-I-Z-E-R-S, buyoptimizers.com slash Luke. And now back to the interview. Tess has a question for the ladies. Uh Uh-oh, I hope I can answer this one. I think I can a little bit. Uh, She says, I have been hesitant to get my hair highlighted because of the chemicals in it, even though she says it's paraben and sulfate free. That's a really important distinction there. It has been almost a year since my last appointment. I usually only get partial and she uses foils, so it isn't directly on my whole head, which makes me feel a little bit better. Any recommendations of things I should take before and after the appointment to help detox from the chemicals? Uh, I would refer back to the first question where I talked about ways to detox. I mean, things like saunas, activated charcoal, binders, things like that are always great when you've um, been exposed to chemicals. I mean, personally, you know, I understand vanity and, and, and I'm not even saying vanity is a bad thing. I understand, you know, you want your hair to look a certain way. You like yourself. You look in the mirror. It looks awesome. You're, you're stoked. Uh, I get that, but um, I don't know, you know, any extra exposure to chemicals is a pretty high price to pay. I like that it's not touching the scalp. I think that's a really important thing to take note of here that when you put anything on your skin, including the skin on your skull, it's going directly, and I mean directly, into your bloodstream. It's not like you eating some broccoli that was sprayed with pesticides and then your eliminatory and detox organs are sorting some of it out and some of it ends up being absorbed into your body and thus into your bloodstream and brain and all your other organs. Uh, We're talking about just a direct hit. It's sort of like when you do bioidentical hormones and it comes in a cream and and you rub it on your wrist or behind your ears to get it in your blood. That's literally what happens and it bypasses your liver. So I would prefer to eat poison than I would put it on my skin. Um, I learned that in part by a story. And I don't know if the story is true, but I know that it would work if you did it. They say, you know, they, they said that Jimi Hendrix actually had a tab of LSD in his headband when he performed at Woodstock. Now, I don't know how one could be on a lot of LSD and perform anything, but then again, he was Jimi Hendrix. Point being that the idea there is that the LSD would have absorbed into his skin through his pores. And uh, that would definitely happen. I mean, if you took a uh, hit of LSD and just held it in your sweaty palm long enough, you would unquestionably be tripping balls in short order. So I would prefer no chemicals on the dome. Uh, And then also, of course, if you just can't resist and you got to do it, well, then you could be taking some binders and things like that and doing a little bit of a mini detox afterwards, some uh, chlorella, things like that. Things that are going to bind to toxins in the gut. But then again, like I said, it's not in your gut, it's in your bloodstream, which is potentially problematic. At the end of the day, can't be too paranoid. You know, we do the best we can. Listen, if you want to dye your hair, do it. However, I have heard of a company and I have no affiliation on this one. I do have affiliations on a lot of recommendations because, you know, I... I do my research and that takes time and energy to do. But this one is one I heard about years ago and my hair I thought would just turn gray at some point and it hasn't. It's gotten a bit thinner. I'm going to work on that a little bit with my friend Ian Mitchell and his C60 formulas. But uh, I heard about this thing called myhairprint.com and apparently it's very effective for coloring your hair. I don't know about highlights, but I know it works to darken your hair uh, according to them. But I, again, have not tried it personally. Uh, It does seem to be highly non-toxic and they 
came out. I think I found out about them maybe, God, 10 years ago or more. And I just checked their website. The website looks beautiful, very robust. So I think if it didn't work, they would probably be out of business by now. Next up, we've got a question from Eric. And he says, my friend is dealing with some sports injury inflammation and what sounds like some type of esophageal reflux. He's seen a doctor, but they're, of course, putting him on meds instantly. Well, that's kind of what they're trained to do, isn't it? He goes on to say, I've recommended an anti-inflammatory diet. Any good books or nutrition, supplement, herbal support to quell this type of inflammation. He's typically averse to any health suggestions, so I'm reluctant to dump a ton of advice on him. I know that's tough when you're someone who's really into natural healing and uh, autonomy within your body and your life, and you have people around you that you love and uh, you see them going down in flames for whatever reason and you think you probably have a solution or a lifestyle intervention and uh, you got to make it simple for them and you've got to make it in many cases logical and something that doesn't sound too far out. So I'm going to make a couple short recommendations here uh, based on my own experience. Now, I don't know that I've had esophageal reflux um, based on an injury or any inflammation, but I used to have hella heartburn for a long, long time. It was a nightmare. So I can give some recommendations based on personal experience. Now, he mentioned that there are, of course, some anti-inflammatory supplements. Uh, One that I really like that might not be on his list is molecular hydrogen. This is an incredible way to uh, squash inflammation and oxidative stress. Molecular hydrogen comes in tablets, also comes in an inhaler. The tablets I like are water and wellness. The inhaler I like is from a company called Vital Reaction. I will warn you, the inhaler is a few thousand dollars. So not for the faint at heart, but the tabs are affordable. I do probably, I don't know, I do probably four glasses of hydrogen water per day and it really helps with inflammation. Next up would be the obvious, right? Ice baths. And I like to say that this one's free, but not necessarily. You might have to buy the ice. Depends on the season and where you're situated on the planet. But man, freezing water, especially water under 35 degrees. I mean, talk about a painkiller, an inflammation squasher. Damn, that's it. Um, And then I might recommend too doing a GI stool test, uh, a little lab run up there to see what's going on in the gut biome. You know, if there's if there's um, acid reflux and this kind of stuff, I mean, when it gets into digestion, it's really good to look at the bacteria, look if there's an imbalance of uh, too much of one kind of bacteria or just not enough of all of them, et cetera. Uh, many of us who, who uh, you know, have eaten the standard American diet, the SAD diet, uh, have guts that are just wrecked and in really bad shape um, due to glyphosate consumption and a number of other things. So I'll tell you what I did to get rid of my reflux issues. And it's very rare that it comes back. I'll tell you when it comes back. (laughs) Actually, it comes back when I eat a lot of gluten. And I know I'm not supposed to eat gluten. I tell everyone not to do it. But listen, man, I'm human. I love pizza. I love sourdough bread. Sometimes, you know, it gets me. Uh, my, My lovely fiance, Allison, does not seem to be intolerant to gluten. And she likes it. And she should. If I was tolerant to it, I would be crushing it. So it's sometimes around the house a little more than it would be if I was single. Well worth it because I love her so much. But sometimes my um, cravings get the best of me, especially when I'm out of my element. Electrolytes and I'll crush a lot of gluten and maybe a bunch of ice cream even. And then that that, uh, reflux situation is likely to come back. So what I recommend is, of course, skipping things uh, that have lectins, grains, gluten, lots of sugar, things that are just hard on your gut, inflammatory foods, right? If you kind of stick to the meat and vegetables, generally speaking, it's going to be a lower inflammatory diet. Now, of course, you want to be cooking most of those vegetables because of the oxalates and things like that. So when I say eat meat and vegetables, I'm not talking about uh, a big oxalate um, you know, raw kale salad. That's a whole other podcast. You can follow Paul Saladino to, to learn all about that. All right. So I'm going to give you the crazy acid reflux cure here. Okay. I don't think you're supposed to use the word cure, but I can say I cured myself, I think, because I did. So this is going to sound nutty, but it it works every time. Anytime that starts to come back, here's what I do. First thing in the morning, 
or any time, really on an empty stomach, when there's no food in your stomach, you take a huge glass of water, just chug down a big old tall glass of water, take a deep breath, hold the breath in, hold the water in. Actually holding your breath in isn't even that important. It's more about getting a big, heavy glass of water in your stomach. And here's what you do. While the water's in your stomach, you stomp down hard on your heels about 10 times, maybe 15 times. So you're standing, you just drink the water, you lift your heels up and boom, boom, boom. You kind of rock yourself and hit the ground. This drops your organs back into place because of the weight of the water. Sometimes you can get something called a hiatal hernia. I had this happen before and it's where certain organs are out of place and kind of get tucked up under your rib cage and things just aren't flowing right. And that can be one of the main causes of acid reflux. That said, I know there are multitudes of reasons that could be happening. So again, not playing doctor here, but I just have to say, honestly, for me, after years and years of heartburn, this little water and stomping on your heels trick fixed it better than anything. It's been incredible. So I wish Eric's friend luck on that one. And uh, hopefully a couple of those suggestions won't be too far out. I mean, honestly, when it comes to changing your diet or taking a bunch of supplements, drinking a glass of water and stomping on your heels might not sound that crazy. Okay, next question is from Lindsay. She says, hi, can a smart house be converted to a normal house, aka do away with Wi-Fi and hardwire everything? I'm big into EMF mitigation and do not want everything connected to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Uh, great question. Uh, Lindsay is brilliant because there is no such thing as a smart house, folks. If your house has smart technology, it is the dumbest house you could ever live in, honestly. If you think of things like smart meters and smart technology, I mean, do you ever think about the wording in the marketing? I mean, it's smart because I guess that device is smart enough to listen to you when you're across the room and say, you know, play Led Zeppelin or... Uh, cook me a biscuit or whatever you're telling your appliances to do. But it is not smart to fill your home with non-ionizing radiation. There are over 30,000 studies, scientific studies, proving that radio frequencies are harmful to biological organisms, period. Those studies, the 30,000, do not include studies that were done in the early 90s by the telecommunications industry talking about the thermal effect of radiation coming from your phone, right? So, and they've, as far as I know, they've never even retested this, but they determined that your phone doesn't make enough heat when it's against your head to really hurt you or cause brain cancer. They weren't even talking about the actual, you know, the real EMF. I mean, that is a type of EMF, I guess, because it's a, it's a form of radiation, thermal radiation, but we're talking about the RF, radio frequencies. And so... I am not a fan. I mean, I've just seen too much. I know too much. There's no, there's no going back to Kansas, folks. Uh, we are not in Kansas anymore. And I think the verdict is in. Uh, we want to eliminate as much of this stuff from our homes as possible. So Lindsay is absolutely on point. And that said, like I always do my best to remember when talking about EMF, it's also really unhealthy to be totally neurotic and paranoid. So you you know, you choose your battles and you do what you can. When it comes to your home, if you own the home and you got a bit of coin, you can do a much better job, uh, much faster in terms of reducing the level of EMF in your house. If you're renting, like I was up until a couple months ago, I would, you know, I would mitigate and I would do some things to minimize, but I wasn't going to like spend a few thousand dollars to shield the whole place and run ethernet cables through the walls and then re-drywall and paint and do all the things. Now that we've purchased a house out here in uh, lovely Texas, luckily for me, the house came hardwired for sound. So it has speaker wires in the walls and instead of having to use a Sonos wireless system or whatever. And uh, also has Ethernet cables throughout the whole house. There's an Ethernet port, a 5CAT, which is not the fastest. I think we're up to 6 now, but it's fast enough for me. Definitely faster than Wi-Fi at any rate, unless you're you know sitting right next to a router. So I'm stoked. It was a it was a lucky break from uh, from the old higher power there that we bought a 2001 house that needed some renovations and in the process of discovering what those renovations would entail. Uh, to my glee, I found that the house was pretty EMF set. 
If you're someone who wants to learn about EMF, this would be a great time to let you know that uh, last year I created something called the EMF Home Safety Masterclass, where you can learn all about what I'm talking about here in great detail. I mean, I'm talking about up to six hours of video content. And we're about to add a new module wherein we show what a home shielding project looks like before and after. So the majority of that content was shot in Los Angeles in my former home where we showed how to do all the testing, all the different sources of EMF, et cetera. Now that I'm out here in Texas, Brian Hoyer came over again and we added another module where he shows how to do the actual shielding, you know, the type of paint you use, how you ground it, what to do, what not to do, really good stuff. So if you want to spend uh, 149 bucks, so it's only $149, folks. Now I know only $149 is, is not an only to some people. A lot of people are strapped because of all these lockdowns and this nonsense going on. But uh, in terms of the amount of content given, I guarantee you $149 for this class is quite a deal. Here's how you get it. Go to lukestory.com slash EMF masterclass. There's a dog out there that's really excited about it too. That's lukestory.com slash EMF masterclass. So shameless plug there, but it, it really is a service to humanity. That course is something I'm really proud of and the people in it have been loving it. And um, it's just it's just an easy way to like, for a lay person to understand what EMF is, all the sources of it, how to test for it and how to fix it. It's pretty badass. Okay, back to answering the question. Now, as a renter, as I said, it was hard to do the mitigation that uh, Lindsay's asking about because it just gets expensive. So... Now that I've purchased, it's a new plan. It's, it's a new world order at the story residence here. And I'm not going to have any wireless devices in the home. So that means no Sonos speakers, no ring doorbells, no Nest thermostats, no wireless baby monitors, smart appliances, none of that stuff. Basically, I'm going to remove, well, I'm just not going to remove, I'm not going to install them. But in Lindsay's case, you want to remove all devices that run wirelessly, period. So anything that you control with your phone, bye, gone. Now, this is if you really want a healthy home. You know, sometimes it's worth it to have some of the conveniences. But to answer this question, she wants to go hardcore. Here's how you do it. Now, the, the reason she wants to do this, too, is worth stating. Uh, Lindsay is aware that when you have all of these different types of devices in your home, it's really like having multiple Wi-Fi routers all over your living quarters. It's an incredibly energetically toxic environment. Like if, if we could see these waves traveling through the air around us, I don't think a person would even walk inside a building that contained all of these devices because it's not only the different frequencies that are emanating from all of these quote end quotes, smart devices. It's the unknown effect of what happens when you combine all of these frequencies together and clash them into one another. So imagine if you could see them, if they were like lasers or smoke or something like that. I mean, you would look into a room and just go, oh my God, I'm not walking in there. That's where the router is. So I think if you want to go full on, the best thing to do would be to perhaps just start by wiring your ethernet and getting little adapters. You can run little adapters so you can still plug in your devices and your phones and anywhere you need internet, et cetera, right? Uh, if you want to have speakers in your house, there's these things called wires. Now, back when I was a teenager, I used to build stereo systems. We had these things called turntables. And we put these big uh, black vinyl discs on them. We called them records and they sounded amazing. And guess what? You can still do that. You need an amplifier <laughs> and a couple speakers and some speaker wires. And you can have way better sounding music than any wireless system will ever get you. And it doesn't cut out and glitch and get all weird. So hard wiring everything is the, is the first step. Uh, now, if you don't want to be that hardcore, you can also just keep your Wi-Fi router in your home for when you need it. I mean, I'm going to do this in the new house. There's going to be Wi-Fi. I'm just going to keep it off most of the time because there's those Ethernet ports everywhere. But if we have friends over and stuff like that, or if I'm live streaming or whatever, I mean, I'm not going to be a total nut about it. I'd probably end up divorced if I was too controlling about all this shit. You know, you're living with other people. You can't be the buzzkill in the house. So, uh, you know, what you do is you have your Wi-Fi router and then you can either put it on a timer. So it turns off every night, say at 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. and turns back on at six or seven, whatever your hours are. There's also something called a Wi-Fi kill switch. 
think I have a link to it on my site. Uh, we'll put it in the show notes. And that just allows you to have a remote where you can turn off the Wi-Fi right when you get into bed. So it's just like, you know, you reach over, you turn off the lights or you hit the kill switch in your room if you're really smart and turn off that AC current. And then wherever your Wi-Fi router is down the hall, you just kind of point the remote over there and blink, turn it off. So those are some recommendations there. Um, also, of course, as I said earlier, I mean, when it comes to EMF, if you can afford it, it's really great just to have someone come out and do a reading on your home. In some cases, your home is like not even as bad as you thought it would be. And some of the mitigation is not that complex. But for the purpose of answering Lindsay's question, yeah, how you do it is you just take everything out of your house that's wireless and figure out how to wire it. Now, in addition to shielding your bedroom and hard wiring everything, uh, in our home, we're going to, of course, have the FLFE service. That's Focus Life Force Energy. It's just, it's really hard to explain because it's so out there and kind of quantum, but uh, we've got it on our apartment here. You can, once you have an account, I think it's like $30 a month, you can change the address at will. You log into your account and you can assign this energetic field. I know it sounds crazy, but it's not. It works to any location and even to your devices, your phone or an object. And uh, it raises the consciousness level, the energy rather, I guess you could say, uh, of your home. And one of the effects it has in passing is that it helps mitigate EMF. It's very cool. So you can find that at flfe.net slash Luke. And they give you a 15-day free trial. You don't even have to put in your credit card or anything. Check it out. I was just in the Facebook group and there were a few uh, sort of comment threads about FLFE. And some people are like, oh my God, I changed my life. Like I've never been so happy. My kids are quiet. Like it's just incredible testimonials. And then there's a few people who are like, I don't know. I turn it on. I don't really feel anything. It's kind of one of those things, you know, it's, uh, I think it's more experienced uh, uh, more rapidly by people that are very energetically sensitive, which I happen to be. And then there's also, as I mentioned, the Soma Vedic, the Blue Shield. There's an incredible system called Biogeometry by this gentleman named uh, Abrahim forget his last name offhand, but I'll be interviewing him soon. He's um, actually from Egypt and he's using sort of sacred geometry and hieroglyphics on devices that go in your house and help with EMF. Again, sounds crazy, but the Egyptians knew something, did they not? And then of course the Leela quantum tech and all of these things help to harmonize the energetics and deal with any ambient EMF that sneaks through even if you have the house shielded, even if you've hardwired everything. So we're still going to have all that stuff because it just makes your house feel amazing. Sort of like when you walk into, you know, uh, an ancient cathedral, right? It's like, what's, I'm not even talking about being religious, but just even a meditation studio or any sort of exalted space where there's just a level of consciousness there that feels really good. Well, a lot of these technologies help your space to just be more harmonious. And one of the things that disrupts the harmony of your home more than anything are these chaotic, non-native alien EMF frequencies, these fields in the air that we can't see or smell or taste or hear, but the body feels it, the biology feels it, the nervous system feels it. So thank you so much, uh, Lindsay, for hitting one of my deepest passion points, and that is really building awareness around EMF. Again, awareness, not paranoia. Like you got to live your life, right? It's it's here. Like there's no making cell service go away. And thank God for it, right? I love it. I mean, I'm on the internet right now. My I'm hardwired. <laughs> my Wi-Fi is turned off. But, uh, you know, I got my phone sitting here in the Defender Shield case, and it's probably not an airplane because I forgot. So it's like, you know, you can't be too paranoid and too too much of a perfectionist, but you can take little steps. And I find just over time, year after year, I just habituate to being a bit smarter about the EMF. Okay, that said, got one last question here and uh, we'll wrap it up. This one's from Nikki. Ooh, this is a good one. Oh man, Nikki, I'm going to give you some tough love here. She says, so I just moved into this apartment and it was so last minute due to COVID and work. Anyway, I feel as though it is infested with mold. It smells musty. If you smell must, it's probably moldy, by the way. And all of my health issues I thought I had healed seem to be coming to the surface again. Oh man, such a bummer. Such a bummer. I know how this goes. Uh, If I'm unable to move into a clean new home for another year, does anyone have any recommendations of what to do to stay home? 
uh, and be somewhat safe from this toxin for the time being. I believe in the biology of belief, so I will continue to tell myself I am safe, but maybe there are other suggestions people have. I really appreciate you guys. And Nikki, sweetheart, I really appreciate you, honestly. And I, I really feel for you here because, man, if the place does in fact have mold, uh, I don't think that the mind over matter quantum resonance method is going to cut it. And I'm not trying to be a buzzkill because I love the work of Bruce Lipton. I've interviewed him here on the show. I actually talked to him about my paranoia at that time about EMF. And and he agreed that, you know, by the biology of belief, the the work that that he put out, he didn't invent this, but it's just, you know, it's the power of the mind and the power of the subconscious mind. And uh, the spiritual power that we each possess as infinite beings embodied in a human meat suit. He said, yeah, Luke, uh, if you believe the cell tower next to you is going to give you cancer, it's a lot more harmful for you than if you don't believe that, but it's still going to hurt you. That was the gist of it. And that's coming from the guy who made this sort of model popular. And um, Joe Dispenza, I asked him a similar question and got a similar answer. It's like, yeah, I mean, we see people doing deep inner work recover spontaneously from tumors. They literally disappear. I've seen it in a Joe Dispenza retreat. He showed the slides. Tumor there, person does this really incredible deep healing meditation work, scan them again, tumor gone. I mean, <laughs> it's called quantum physics. Look it up. But it's real. It's real. Uh, however, man, mold, oof. This is This is a rough one. And to me, this if you do in fact have mold and if it smells musty, it's likely you do. This is a 911 emergency. Like I would literally not walk into a room that had mold, especially if it was moldy enough to smell musty. If it was like black mold, oh man, no, I would, and I'm not even exaggerating here and I don't want Nikki to panic because listen, at the end of the day, you know, we're only going to be here for so long anyway and you do the best you can. But I straight up would move into a homeless shelter and break my lease, lose my deposit before I would spend one night knowingly in a moldy home. Although when you travel and you stay in Airbnbs, when you stay in hotel rooms, I don't know what the percentage is, but I would guess that a vast number of nights you spend away from home, you are in a moldy environment. And I know when I am because my joints start to hurt, I get headaches, I get moody and agitated, I get brain fog. And that's a sign for me to uh, change into a different hotel or a different room. And that's happened on a few occasions. But first, Nikki, here's what I do. Get a mold remediation company to come out stat, like right now, call in sick, tell your boss or, you know, your employees or whatever your situation is that like, you got a day off, get someone to come in and do some testing and find out if this is in fact the case. And if so, how bad it is and where the mold is located. Now, if you look under your sinks or anywhere in this apartment and you see water damage, it's pretty much a guarantee that there's mold. That's the bummer. It's not like you don't have mold when you can see the mold. You have mold when there was a water leak and it's been sitting there for 24, 48 hours. Like you have mold straight up. That's just the way mold works, unfortunately. But mostly you will know, as Nikki indicated, that uh, past symptoms that you had eradicated when uh, come back. And new symptoms, like the ones I described, show up. And that's a great way. But really, I think it's a great idea to get it tested. And if it does, in fact, have mold, again, my advice would be to immediately get out, stay somewhere else, and uh, make your move. You know, it, it sucks if you have to break a lease. Could, I don't know. It could have an impact on your credit. It's not good and it's inconvenient. But man, I don't think any amount of money or inconvenience is worth harming your body. It's the only one we have, you know, for this lifetime. So um, I'm going to literally say a prayer for you right now, Nikki. I love you, girl. I don't know you, but I know you. And, um, you know, you listen to the show, you're into this work, you're, you're into uh, your own evolution and well-being. And for that, I honor you and I respect you. And um, I really hope that this works out. And I'd also like to recommend that you and anyone interested in learning more about mold goes to episode number 337 with Michael Rubino. He's the guy that did the consulting for my own mold remediation in the house I just bought. He's got a company called allamericanrestoration.com. Again, we'll put it in the show notes, allamericanrestoration.com. 
And his company, uh, they have a few locations around the U.S. and they do testing and I believe remediation as well. So uh, that's who I would call. I met him after I had already had my testing done. I sent him the results. He was on the podcast and he guided my general contractor uh, to do the remediation up to code or at least as close as we could get to it. I think the quote that I had to do it with a remediation company, not Michael's, but before I met him, another one, and they were like, it's going to be between fifteen and $30,000. And this is like before even moving in. I'm like, well, which is it, <laughs> right? So I opted to get Michael's help and, you know, just do it ourselves. Now, my mold was not bad. It was an airborne. Uh, there were just some, you know, uh, past water leaks under a couple of the sinks and stuff like that. So, you know, when these remediation companies give you a quote, it's so expensive because they're going like, I mean, they're going you know, uh, lab official clean bill of health after you're done. I mean, they are super, super hardcore. So the mold in my place was not that bad. Otherwise we would have, we honestly, we would, we wouldn't have bought this house and we liked this house and there weren't a lot of homes available in Austin at the time. Actually, it's even more scarce now. So uh, we would have passed if it was like a black mold situation or if it smelled musty and there was airborne spores or mitotoxin, that's a hard, hard pass. That is a, um, you know, hand to the face. No, thank you. Sit down, please. We are out of here. Uh, but we were able to work it out thanks to uh, Michael and um, and a bit of extra coin and all that. So that brings this episode to a close. Wow, I managed to get it done in an hour, folks. 59 minutes and 50 seconds. I'm going to give you some information here in closing. Again, we've got a great show next week all about neurocranial restructuring. This stuff is incredible with its creator, Dr. Dean Howell. I always try to go to the top of the food chain and find the OG on any topic. And he is the guy he's treated me and his modality is insanely cool for all kinds of pain, uh, skeletal misalignment, migraines, uh, avoiding C-sections. I mean, it's pretty far reaching and his body of work is incredible. Really interesting guy. So that's next Tuesday. Then uh, also remember that in the show notes here, we've included links. I get emails from people and a lot of people comment in the Facebook group. Hey, how do I find this thing you talked about? I'm like, dog, I pay people a pretty decent amount of money to make sure that every word I say that's searchable online uh, is put in the show notes. So make sure you get those if these are things you want to follow up on or research yourself. I always recommend that people do their own research. Again, don't listen to me, man. I'm just a guy sharing my passion and my experience. If you want to get these show notes emailed to you every week, go to lukestory.com slash newsletter and just enter your name and email and I'll shoot you an email every Tuesday with the show notes. Now you won't get this one because you're too late. Those of you that are already on the email list will not only get the show notes with the clickable links, but you will get a link or you will have gotten already in your inbox a link to the complete transcripts where every single word on this show and every show over the past year or so is written down. So you can save that. And uh, next thing I want to tell you is what? I had another thing for you. Oh, I know what it was. I was going to thank our sponsors. Without our sponsors, I wouldn't be sitting here on the mic because I would have a job somewhere. I'd be down the street working at Home Depot or I don't know what I'd be doing. I'm really not qualified to do much else other than this. So if you want to support the show and support our sponsors, uh, feel free to do so. You can get your element electrolytes that I alluded to earlier. I freaking love these things. They make it so easy. Well, not so easy if you're a crackhead for ice cream and gluten like I am sometimes, but they make it much easier to avoid binge eating, uh, you know, loading up on too many carbs and sugar at night. Like food cravings is what I really love it for. Uh, most people use them, I think, um, for athletic recovery, right? When you get depleted of uh, electrolytes and minerals from sweating a bunch, they're great for that, obviously. And these are the best electrolytes that I've found. And they're absolutely delicious. And they kind of taste like, I don't think you can say other brand names, but they kind of taste like those sports drinks that you see people drinking on the side of the uh, football games. You know what I mean? But they're not loaded with a bunch of corn syrup and artificial flavors and colors and garbage. They're all natural and they taste amazing. You can find them at drinkelement.com slash Luke. Now here's the spelling. D-R-I-N-K, drink. L-M-N-T dot com slash Luke, drinkelement.com. Next up, we've got our friends over at Organifi. I'm trying to get my, my buddy Drew Canoli, who's the 
founder of Organifi to move to uh, Austin. He lives out in Sedona right now and he has a place in California too because Organifi is a huge company and they're awesome and he's been very successful at that. But I'm like, come to Austin, man. He's such a great guy. His products are awesome. You can go to Organifi.com with an I. All right, it's like the word Organifi but with an I.com slash lifestylist. You got a code there and that gets you 25% off. The code is lifestylist. I would recommend their Organifi Gold and the Organifi Green. They're awesome. Someone hit me up on uh, Instagram the other day on a DM. They're like, I want to order Organifi, but does it have metals in it? And I was like, I don't think so. Like, I would think they would test for it. I mean, I know Drew. He's he's a stickler for quality. So I sent him a text and I was like, hey, send him the screenshot of the girl's question. He was like, what? Duh, are you kidding me, Luke? He's like, we go through like multiple tests for every batch we put out for metals and yeast and mold and all that kind of stuff. So Organifi is legit. Last but not least, we've got magbreakthrough.com slash Luke. And if you use the code Luke10 there, you save 10% off this incredible magnesium supplement, magbreakthrough.com slash Luke. They use seven different types of magnesium to make sure it's totally bioavailable. It's freaking awesome. I chug these things. And speaking of EMF, uh, now, you know, I don't have a study in front of me on this, but I'm sure they exist. There's a couple of things you can take that make you more resilient to EMF. One is magnesium because your magnesium gets tanked because of the influx of calcium into your cells that throws off the balance of your calcium, egg, magnesium in your body. So you deplete magnesium much faster when exposed to EMF fields. Now that's true. So I would just think, well, if we take more magnesium, at least it's going to bring us back into balance. And by the way, you can also take molecular hydrogen because it is protective against radiation, as is C60. So, you know, those are things I like to stack up on. So thank you to uh, Element. Oh, you know what? I forgot to give you the, uh, the uh, deal at Element. Here's what's up. If you purchase an Element sample pack, oh, you can, oh, okay. If you go to Drink Element, I see it now. I see it now. Now I can read. If you go to drinkelement.com, uh, and uh, drinkelement.com slash Luke, you're going to get an element sample pack for the cost of shipping, which is five bucks on US orders. And uh, each sample pack includes eight packets of element. And as I said, they're delicious. And this offer is limited to one time per customer. So that's the, uh, the element deal there. We always try to get a deal for you guys. You know what I'm saying? Like if someone's going to run promos on the show. There has to be something... Um, that serves the listener other than like someone just going, Hey, give me your money. They got to give you a little something too. And they got to give me something so I can do this and pay my team and do all the things that I do. So thank you so much for joining me on this solo show. I had a really fun time doing this one and uh, I'll be checking the Facebook group periodically. Again, if you want to join that group, if you're still on Facebook, we all have our issues with Facebook, I think, but uh, it does still serve a purpose for the time being. Um, as they're spying on us and taking our data and doing God knows what else, censoring everyone that I would enjoy following on Facebook. Somehow I have survived in there. I don't know how. It's a miracle, frankly. Don't tell them. Like, sh- let's just stay under the radar, stay in there as long as I can. But you can just search for The Life Stylist. Uh, yeah, it's called The Life Stylist Group. It's a Facebook group. And again, that's where these questions came from. So if you have questions, post them in there. It's likely that someone other than me, another listener of this show, is going to expertly answer your question. In fact, if you ask a really good question in there, sometimes there are like 40 comments. There's 6,000 people in there. So it's a great place to get some uh, support and ideas for things you're going through. It's It's also a great place to be of service if you're someone... It has a lot of knowledge about consciousness and um, healing on all levels, biohacking, etc. Like join the group and make a contribution to the community there, especially at a time where it's difficult for so many people to be in community for real in person. All right. God bless. Love you. Thanks for listening to the show. And if you enjoyed this episode, please do yourself, your friend and me a favor and share it. <laughs>